This episode is brought to you by my bookkeeping strategy sessions. You're probably in one of these three areas when it comes to bookkeeping in your business, DIY, outsourcing, or understanding. DIY being you just, you're doing it yourself. You need to know what to do. You need some expert advice. Outsourcing, you're ready to get it off your plate. You're done doing it for forever. And you just want to know how to find somebody, how to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And the third is understanding. No matter what, who's doing the bookkeeping, you're still getting reports and you need to understand what they mean, how to read them, and really how to make decisions off of that information. Each of these stages comes with different struggles and questions, and I can help with all three stages. If you're stuck and don't know how to begin tackling your massive bookkeeping problem that's keeping you up at night, I can help. We can create an actionable, manageable plan for you to catch up with your books and how not to fall behind again. To book one of these limited sessions, email me at lydia at dacbalance.com and we'll just email a little bit to make sure that we're a good fit to work together and then we'll go ahead and get that set up. Now on with the show. You've started a home-based service business and you've found that running a business is harder than it looks and more overwhelming than you ever thought it would be. This podcast is the best of the best information that I've learned to help grow and sustain my business. Listen, subscribe, and follow along. We can avoid the overwhelm and start creating a business we love to run. Welcome back to episode number 41, how to manage your own bookkeeping in the DIY phase. And in the introduction, I talked about the DIY phase a little bit, but if you are here, that means that you are the one in your business getting into QuickBooks, sending out invoices, reconciling, just doing all of the tasks that you need to be doing for your bookkeeping. And you're probably finding that it's a little overwhelming to manage everything because there really is a lot that goes into bookkeeping. And if you're not used to doing it, it can definitely become overwhelming really, really fast. But first, I do want to introduce myself if you're new around here. My name is Lydia Miller, and I am the podcast host um, of this podcast. And I own a business in Pensacola, Florida, where I help businesses with their bookkeeping. I help them know what to do, how to outsource, and how to understand what's going on. And I have loved doing this podcast and have really loved helping people uh, with their bookkeeping and especially my clients because when they come to me, especially with like cash flow issues or other things that they're really thinking forward about their business and making better decisions, that's really my jam to help them out with that. So when it comes to this DIY business and knowing what to do, you're probably just needing some really practical tips is what I've been hearing from different people that I've been talking with and just knowing what to do for your business. So I have five tips for you today on how to manage your own bookkeeping. So number one, put it on your calendar and stick to it as if it were a meeting with your most important client. And by put it on your calendar, I mean block off time to work on your bookkeeping. So make a date with yourself to get it done. And this should be at least monthly. And this is for functions like reconciling, creating invoices, marking invoices paid, and so on and so forth. If you dread this every single month and maybe you skip a month because you just don't feel like it or maybe you're just so busy that you don't want to think about it, try to not make this such a boring experience because I understand it can be pretty boring and pretty daunting to do. So find a quiet spot that you're away from distractions or go to a coffee shop if you don't mind some background noise and have a beverage of your choice. Um, I would say anything alcoholic is probably not a good idea (laughs) since you are working with your, you know, your money. You really don't want to mess that up. But maybe like a smoothie or like a fancy coffee or something that you just don't normally do to have as a treat while you're working on it. And when you're done, make plans to go do something you enjoy. So maybe that's getting a pedicure or maybe you splurge for a massage once you're done or you go on a walk or you just do something for you afterwards to reward yourself for getting this done, especially if you're having a hard time doing it. Number two, check your cash every day, even if it's painful. And by painful, I mean if you know that you're getting close to zero or if you know that there's not a lot to look at and it makes you depressed, 
still look at it because cash flow and cash management are two areas that absolutely destroy businesses. If you don't have cash, then you really don't have much of a business. So make sure that you're checking your balances every single day. And this is regardless if you're outsourcing your bookkeeping or if you're doing it yourself, you as a CEO should always know how much cash that you have and you should always have a pulse on that. It's so, so, so important because so many businesses are destroyed from not having enough cash flow and it's just critical that you know what's going on in this area of your business. And so if you're if your cash balance is getting low, then you know that you need to check on your receivables or slow down on your spending or maybe return something that you shouldn't have bought. And keeping a pulse on what's happening is just doing that. And if, so let's say if you know that payroll is on Friday and you're going to need at least $2,000 on Monday, if you go into your bank account and it says 1500 then you know you have to have at least $500 by Friday. And you can track those big expenses to know when they're due so that you have enough to cover them when the time comes. And it's also important on a side note to try to build up an emergency fund of a few months of expenses so that it doesn't get down that close. But in the meantime, while you're doing that, just make sure that you're really keeping an eye on your cash and how much you're spending, especially if you have employees that can spend money on behalf of your business, really make sure that you're keeping an eye on that cash. Number three, send out invoices promptly and follow up. So this all goes back to receivables and cash flow. When you have a contract with a client, it should have a fee schedule in the contract and you can create those invoices in QuickBooks and date them in the future so that you know when to send out the invoices and send them promptly. Make a calendar reminder. Um, Make sure that you're sending out those invoices because that is how you're getting paid. That's how you're paying everybody else for your business. And you want to make sure that you're following up with them if they're not paid within a few days. Definitely within a few weeks, you want to follow up with them. And if you're sending out invoices on the 1st and on the 30th, they're not paid yet, you definitely want to ask your client like, hey, don't forget that this invoice is due. Um, You don't really want to pester your clients about this necessarily, but you do want them to know that you're running a business and not a charity. (laughs) And uh, you may even want to have language in your contract that states if they don't pay, then they don't get their work because it's just that important to set the expectations up front that, hey, you expect to be paid promptly and even give them a due date to say you're sending out the invoice on the 1st and it's due by the 10th or it's due by the 15th or something in there to where you know if they don't pay by that date, then you have something to go back on and say, hey, don't forget this was due a couple days ago. Please pay your invoice as soon as possible. You also should probably put in their late fees because I have had clients before who have been a few months late and I made the mistake of not having late fees in my contract like I should have. So you want to make sure you have that. Either you could do a percentage or you can do a flat fee. Either way, it's up to you to decide what you want to do. So number four, put time aside to pay your bills one day a week or to see what was withdrawn from your bank account. Now, this is different than the first item that we talked about because that was mainly geared towards like your tasks and QuickBooks that you're doing. This is just making sure that your bills are paid, that you are paying your um, vendors. And I have clients that still get paper bills or electronic bills that are emailed to them that they need to pay. And so keeping up with these is really essential to build trust and goodwill with your vendors. If you become known for not paying your bills timely, then people won't want to work with you. If you're paying electronically, this really won't take a long time for you to pay your bills. And if you're cutting checks, it'll take a little bit longer if you're, you know, handwriting or if you're entering in QuickBooks and printing them out, which is, you know, more likely what you're doing if you're doing checks. Um, It will take a little bit longer, but it's worth it to keep up to to keep up with it every single week to make sure that everyone's getting paid and that you aren't that person that they're talking about who doesn't pay their bills who doesn't pay their bills on time because eventually they don't have to keep servicing you they can drop you as a client and you don't want that to happen and number five you want to keep up with your receipts even if you're just taking a photo of them Now, here's what I mean by that. A lot of people try to keep up with their receipts and they end up in their car, in their purse, in their wallet, all crumbled up and they keep them in there for six months or eight months. And by the time they look at them again, they're all faded or they're so jumbled you can't see them and it's just a mess. I have had clients before 
bring me like Ziploc bags full of receipts that they are pretty sure are business expenses, but they're not quite sure. Nightmarish, nightmarish. And so here is the simplest way, as long as you have a smartphone, of how to keep up with your receipts. So let's say that you are in the checkout line at Target and you've just bought office supplies. Before you leave the line, take the receipt, take a picture of it, and you're done. Make sure that you do at least that. Now, still keep the receipt just in case. But if you don't find the receipt later, then it's okay. You still have that electronic copy of the receipt. And what you can do then is when you go into QuickBooks and you see that expense there, let's say it's $40 at Target, you can attach the picture of the receipt to the transaction and fill in what it was for so that you always have that physical copy. And if and if the IRS ever needs a true physical copy, print it out for them. <laughs> like as long as you have a picture of the receipt, then you're fine. And you want to make sure that you keep one of those for everything that you buy in your business card. And it can be just that simple to where you just take a picture of it. And then, you know, once a week or once a month, you go back through the photos on your phone and you upload them to Dropbox into a file for that month so that you have all your receipts there and you can attach them in QuickBooks that way to make it really, really simple. So again, the five ways that are really tactical that you can do to manage your bookkeeping if you're in the DIY phase is put it on your calendar as an appointment and keep that appointment like it's the most important client you have. Check your cash every single day. Send out your invoices promptly and be sure to follow up with them. Put aside time to pay your bills at least once a week or to check and see what was withdrawn and keep up with your receipts. Now, those are just five really tactical ways that you can keep up with your bookkeeping and different ways that you can hopefully will help you out as you're um, managing this yourself. And um, I know from just running a business, you're managing a thousand different things at the same time. So the simpler you can make your bookkeeping and the simpler you can make these systems, the better. And no one's going to judge you if it seems so basic to you. Like, no, no one's judging you for that. Just do what works and make sure that it works for you. And as a little preview, I am creating a DIY guide that is going to come out on August 12th. And there's going to be a lot of these tips and probably at least 20 more pages of things that you should be doing, how you should be doing them, and so on and so forth. And I'm really, really excited about it. I probably shouldn't have told you that, but I'm just so excited about it. I've been working on it for a while now and I am ready to get that into your hands. So if you are interested in that, be sure to keep listening because I'm for sure going to be talking about it more and more. Um, And if you definitely want to be kept up to date, you can follow me on Instagram at Lydia.Miller.MBA or... I can put you on my email list to send you an email once I have it ready to go. And you can email me at Lydia at DACBalance.com. And in the meantime, if you're thinking, I just need to get this DIY down, I just have other questions and you need some help, then let's schedule a strategy session to where we can look at those problems and find a solution for you. You can schedule one of those by emailing me at Lydia at DACBalance.com and just give me a little blurb of the problem that you're having and we can discuss ways to get to a solution in our strategy session. So until next time, go and make it happen.